Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of High Vibe in It. We are super excited because today we're talking about manifesting, which of course is one of our favorite topics ever to nerd out, geek out, and <laughs> be all witchy about. So today we're here and we're going to be sharing five um, really fun ways to really get in touch with your intentions, to find clarity, to cultivate excitement. And these are basically manifesting tools and or rituals that can help you to align with what you want. And I just want to preface this with from one perspective, it's really important that you do these things because A, they're super fun, B, they're super effective, and C, it helps you to get close with your intention and also to like release it to the universe at the same time. But from another perspective, like, You've already been asking for what you want your whole life. So this intention setting is just extra. It's just bonus. It's not like you can't manifest if you don't set intentions, which from another perspective is true. So I know I'm sounding contradictory, but the more conscious you become, the more perspectives you can hold on to. And like, I'm totally into seeing things from all perspectives these days. So from one perspective, this is super important. From another perspective, it's literally just for fun. What yeah. do you think of this, Lindsay? Well, I think it's always for fun. It's always because <laughs> for yeah. one, if it's not fun, what the hell are you doing it for? Right. Um, manifesting in itself should never be like difficult work. It shouldn't it's, be like homework or a no, chore. It's gonna be fun. It's supposed to be fun. You can't you can't really manifest the things you want if you're in a low vibe like mood, you know, you, or if you feel like it's gonna be too hard, then it will be. But I like to look at these tools as companions or like I think I. I use the phrase supporting actors because your whatever you're doing with your um, manifesting practices, whether it be like your morning mindset routine or whatever kind of little techniques that you're using woven into your manifesting practice, these are just more um, companions that you can add on and kind of boost the power even more. Um, more is always better, I think, <laughs> when it comes to manifesting. If you're doing all the things, it, it, it might benefit you even more than if you were just doing one or two or if you were spending five minutes on it versus maybe 15 minutes. You know, More intention, more intentional emotion is always going to get you there faster. So these five that we're going to go over today are not all of them by any means, but they are a really good start and a really good, um, I guess, uh, way to get more in tune with what works for you because not all of these are going to feel great but we're hoping that by the end of this episode one of them at least is going to be like shoot I should have been doing this since day one this is amazing this is so fun and that's just going to drive it to you faster yeah and especially if you're new to the whole idea of manifesting in the law of attraction this is going to be a super super valuable episode for you because we're kind of going to spend a couple minutes on each technique kind of explaining how we do it why we like it why it's so valuable how to make it fun and when Lindsay was saying earlier like the more time you spend on these things the better that's true unless you are doing it from a place of desperation. So let's oh, just yes. throw the desperation out the window and say that we are doing this to manifest our desires based out of a fun place and not out of a needy place because yeah. neediness blocks a lot of people from getting what they want because when you're in a state of need, you have so much resistance. Yeah, you're strangle your holding the thing that you want. Yeah. yeah, it's like when you're holding sand in your hands and if you squeeze your hand too tight, it all slips out of your fingers. But if yeah. you cup your hand just nicely and then you put the sand in there, then you can hold a lot more. Yeah. So that's kind of the approach we want you to come from. Not like, oh, I need to manifest my ex back. I'm going to make a dream jar and he's going to come back to me like, no. This is never, not what we're ever, talking about. <laughs> never, 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 never manifest an ex. Never. It's never a good idea. It is never a good idea. I need to say it one more time. It is never a good idea. <laughs> We're not going to go into that because I feel like that's a whole ever, separate episode. Hey, well, don't bring it up if you don't want me to talk about it. Do not <laughs> manifest an ex. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so never a good idea. But what these things <laughs> will do is is one of them is going to resonate. Maybe two of them, maybe three of them are going to resonate with you. And you're going to be like, that sounds super fun. I'm going to do that. It should never be from a place like Kelsey said of desperation or need. And that's just a blanket statement. I think yeah. we're probably going to say it in every episode, but hopefully we'll get to a point where you guys are super annoyed with us saying this because it <laughs> is always true. You should never, ever, ever try to do any of this. Never do self-hypnosis, never do manifesting in a super depressed or needy or desperate vibe because it's, it's not, it's kind of going to be to your detriment. Well, and here's the thing, like if you are trying to manifest something because you absolutely need it, 
the, your problem isn't that you're without the manifestation and that having it is going to fix your whole life. Exactly. The problem is you need to work with that neediness. Where is that coming from? How can you feel more whole? How can you feel like your needs are getting met from the universe? How can you trust your life? How can you relax your nervous system? Like you have so many other things that need to be dealt with before you can start manifesting. Manifesting should be from a place of empowerment, not from a place of lack. And oftentimes we get into manifesting ironically because we are in a state of lack and we want to manipulate and control our lives and manifest all the stuff that we don't have because we're so tired of not having it. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of how I got into manifesting and I've had a lot of success. So I'm not saying it's not possible to start in that mindset and switch to a more healthy one. But what I am saying is if you feel like you're needy and desperate, work on the neediness and desperation first. Yeah. Don't try to just like get outside things to solve your life because that's not ever going to help you in any way. It's about you and how you feel. Yeah. I feel like we're saying these things in every episode, but if this is the first episode, well, it's important. To, no, if this is the first episode you're listening to, you'll be like, Oh my God, that was so profound. And then you go back to listen to everything else. And you're like, this is the same thing that's to say, but it's that important. Like these are, these are things that if you need a reminder of somebody listening is going to need this reminder and everything hope, you know, all we can hope for is that every week we say things that people need to hear. So let's get to it. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to dive into these companion tools and, and help somebody feel as playful with these things as I do because it's supposed to be fun, you know? Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is kind of one that I've discovered and has worked really, really well for me. And it's also very, very fun. And it is the concept of the dream jar. Now, if you're listening to this, then just kind of, um, follow along with what I say. But if you're watching the video, then, um, you know, this will be posted 24 hours after the live air. But if you're watching the video on a replay, then I'm going to kind of show you uh, what we're working with here. So with the dream jar, all you're going to need is a jar and some dreams. <laughs> it's very simple. And it's exactly it's in the name. So I just have like a mason jar. I don't know if it's a mason jar or like a, it says ball on it, but it's purple. And I like purple because I feel like it reminds me of like amethyst and I thought that was really cute. So I just went and purple got Purple represents um, abundance and also like regality. So like when you wear the color purple, yes. you're like channeling like a regal. Essence. Like royalty kind of. Mm -hmm. So exactly. um, so I just grabbed this because it seemed like really appropriate for what I was about to do. And then you just kind of, I took sticky notes. So I have all of these like folded up sticky notes with my, with my goals, intentions, and dreams on them. And you can do as many as you want. I would say probably no less than five because you want to touch all the areas of which you're trying to manifest. So money, if there's something in family that you want, if there's um, uh, anything you want more abundance of or, or maybe that relationship that you're looking for, not an ex but any new relationship <laughs> that you're looking for, um, <laughs> you can you can write that stuff down. And part of writing it is number one, you're gonna you're gonna write it down with intention and whatever feeling or emotion that you're wanting to manifest, get into that emotion right now. And by just in order to do that, all you have to do is sit down and spend. I love the 17 second pure thought idea. Are you familiar, Kels? Yeah, isn't that what Abraham Hicks says? Yes. That you should spend 17 seconds focused on a topic in order for it to gain momentum yes. energetically? Exactly. So in order for it to gain the, the manifestation momentum that you need, uh, you should sit sit with pure intention on this, whatever you wrote on the sticky note of the piece of paper for 17 seconds. And you can set a timer, but 17 seconds happens so fast that if you just sit there and think about it for you know a decent amount of time and really settle into that emotion of having it, it's going to be 17 seconds or longer. So you need at least 17 seconds. And then you just fold it up when you're done visualizing it and sitting in it for a minute. Feel all the gratitude. Um, pop it in the jar. And I think I have like 15 or 20 here. But do that until you, you're pretty satisfied. And then you just kind of throw them in the jar like this. If you're just listening, then just throw them in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going as well as I wanted. But okay, so... <laughs> So my jar is pretty full. It's like halfway full. But I thought, and this is actually something that, um, Kelsey, we're going to go out, go over in a second. But 
we're, the next topic is going to be crystals. And it's so funny that that is the next topic because I actually felt when I made this jar, I felt a pull to put in my quartz, which is just an amplifier, I guess, when it comes to manifesting. I don't know a huge amount about crystals. Kelsey seems to know more than me. So that's why she's going to talk about it. But it's all about what you're feeling. And in that moment, I really felt I'm going to put my quartz in here because if it's an amplifier, then it's going to do its job perfectly inside my amethyst looking jar. And then you just um, see here. Here's the thing. You can seal it, but it depends on how you feel. Some days you want to you want to seal them and keep the energy going. But other days it just feels better to me to not have it because I feel like it's a more free flow of energy if it's not covered. You know what I mean? If the lid's not on. So it's really up to you what you decide to do. I decided to leave the cover off um, to give my dreams room to grow. <laughs> but then you just, you know, if you want to make this part of your manifesting practice, all you have to do in the morning or the evening or whenever is good for you, pick a time of day to sit, pull one of your intentions out of the jar and meditate on it again. And just really give it the time to grow that it needs to grow. And then before you know it, you'll be pulling a dream out of your jar and you'll be looking at it and saying, oh my gosh, this has happened. That's amazing. Then you'll have a miniature celebration and party for yourself and start writing another one and put it back in the jar. So it's so, so cool. It's one of my favorite ways to do it. Um, do you have a dream jar, Kels? Have you tried it? That's cute. I have something similar. It's actually a little box and I keep yeah. it in the nightstand next to my bed and it has Frida Kahlo on it because I'm obsessed with Frida <laughs> and I put all my dreams, affirmations, intentions in there and I usually write them out in the first person, which is something that I teach in my manifesting masterclass, like live in the wish fulfilled, mm -hmm. live as if it's already happening. So when you're imagining these things and setting these intentions, it's really nice to write it in the first person as long as that feels empowering for you. So yeah. for example, I'm in a great, kind, loving, supportive partnership, mm -hmm. not I want or I need a- right. Like you can want it, that's fine, but that's a way less empowering way to state it instead of just saying at some point in reality, I have this because from one perspective, time is not really a thing. Everything that's going to happen has already happened and or is already happening. Yeah. So for you to write it out as if it's already happening is not necessarily a lie. So you might as well just go with that and live in the wish fulfilled. So yeah, I, I have like something that. similar. And I also... Um, what I, you know, kind of like going back to the narrative that I mentioned in a previous episode, I am so happy and excited now that, and it doesn't have to be happy or excited. It could be, I am so relieved now that I don't have to worry about money or I have more than enough, or I am so excited now that I found my lifelong partner or whatever it is. If you put the emotion in the affirmation, you can't help but know how, which emotion you're going to have to tune into in order for that to be, um, established and manifested to you. So I, I really like that. I have a healthy relationship or if you want to think about what you're going to feel when you have it, just throw that in there too. Like it's, it's you, you're the star of the show. So whatever you want to do and feels best for you is what is going to work the best. Um, yeah. So you want to talk about crystals? Yeah. So our second manifesting tool that we want to mention on this show today is crystals. So crystals, gems, stones, whatever you want to call them, they can be a real friend in your manifesting efforts. And if you come to my house, I'm obsessed with feng shui. I love shiny things. There's crystals everywhere. Um, they're very particular about where they like to be placed. I find that they don't like to be close to the Wi-Fi or cell phones. They prefer to be close to plants, sometimes other crystals. Some crystals prefer to be in the dark. Some prefer to be in the light. You kind of got to feel it out intuitively. I'm kind of sensitive to my crystals. I feel like when I put them in the wrong area, they're like looking at me like, really? You put me here? <laughs> okay, so that's what I was, was going to ask you. So like how is um, – a person who isn't quite, maybe quite as in tune, but maybe wants to get more in tune with themselves. Mm -hmm. How do they distinguish where and what to do? Is there, you, do you have, you have a blog post about it, right? Is, do you, I have a blog that? post on which crystals are good for helping you manifest what things. Yeah. So if you go to KelseyAida.com, which is my blog, you go to the little search tab on the side, or if you're on mobile, it's at the bottom type crystals. And there's a few different um, blog posts that'll walk you through how to use them, what crystals yeah are good for manifesting what things so for example like citrine is a really great crystal if you're trying to call in more abundance um, rose quartz is a great crystal if you want to manifest more self-love or potentially a partnership um, clear quartz is pretty much the all-around like 
to me, it's one of my favorite crystals. I have it all over my house. I have a bunch of different pieces of it. And that is just a great healing stone. And also it's like an amplifier, like how you said. So whatever you're trying to manifest, it's an all around general great stone for helping you manifest. But the thing with crystals is they have a consciousness. They are living beings, even though it just looks like a rock. It has an energy. It has a consciousness. So um, I don't necessarily recommend buying new crystals because you don't know where they come from. I usually go to secondhand stores and find crystals that people have didn't want anymore. And first of all, they're way cheaper. And that way I don't feel like I was responsible for the mining of said crystal. <laughs> I'm just inheriting it from someone else because- And you can some- clean them to your own energy, right? Yes. And then once you take the crystal home or let's say somebody gifts you a crystal or whatever, you want to cleanse the energy of the crystal by either running it under some water water. Not all crystals can be underwater. So That's you have to true. Google this when you figure out what crystal you have, or you can use sage to clean the crystal. Um, you can put it in dirt to bury it for a little bit. So the earth takes all the energy and renews it and then bury it, like dig it back up. That will cleanse the crystal. Um, and then once you've cleansed the crystal, you want to spend a moment with it and ask it if it will be your manifesting crystal. Like you don't just get to abuse these crystals and be like, oh, you're my rock now. You're going to help me manifest this. Like, no, your crystal is your friend. You have to establish a relationship with this crystal. So what you do is you hold it up to your heart and you just ask politely with your intention. You don't have to say it out loud. I mean, just in your mind, it will know. It will respond energetically. And you basically say, Like, would you please be my love manifesting crystal or would you like to help me manifest more abundance or whatever it is? And then you'll usually just feel, you'll feel it in your heart if it's a yes or a no. They're almost always going to say yes because they're, they're our allies. So once you get a yes from your crystal energetically, which it's up to you to be intuitive enough to sense that. And to answer your question earlier, meditating with your crystal helps you to establish a bond with it. So if you have questions about where should this crystal be? Uh, does it like the light or the dark? Does it like to be next to these plants? Should I wear it as a necklace? Like whatever it is, the more time you spend with your crystal, um, the more answers you'll get. You'll be more connected to it. So yeah, I kind of lost track of what I was saying. We need to get a break <laughs> soon. So I'm all distracted. <laughs> no, it's okay. I actually was thinking of a question as you were talking about it. Um, you mentioned which ones are or which, which ones are good for, for what topic you kind of briefly went into that, but crystals are also very, very good for chakra balancing too. And, and mm-hmm. that's another really big, huge way that they're used. And, you know, I, I see these questions all the time. Which one should I get? Which one do I need? And like you said, just feel it out. If you're in, let's say a secondhand store and you see their collection, you're going to be drawn to a certain one. You just are. Yes. So Pick trust your crystals that feeling. based off of your intuition. If you are like, oh my God, this crystal is so beautiful. I'm so drawn to it. I don't really know why. Yeah. There's probably a reason. It could be calling to you. It, it wants to help you with something. Um, or that's going to be the best crystal for you in that moment in your life. It's going to be the most supportive one. Even, I mean, I'm really shallow. Like I always go based off of the most beautiful crystal and they always help me. So just saying, what a I'm, a super, I'm, really I'm shallow. a super visual person. So I'm like, mm, I don't really like that crystal. This one's much prettier. And I always go with the pretty one. <laughs> well, and your crystal friends know that about you. So who cares? They know me. <laughs> they know me. They're all over my house. I'm like, you're on display. You're on display. You're on display. I'm wearing one right now. I'm wearing clear quartz as a, um, yep. a necklace. Yeah. I um I saw your living room and it's freaking gorgeous. You have a massive one on your coffee table. That's just like so, so cute. Oh, yes. They're I wish I could, but sparkling. I have one right here in my kitchen. I got one right there. I got a bunch in a little circle over there next to some plants. They're all over my house because, well, they have a really high frequency. I don't usually keep them in the bedroom unless I want to help use them while I'm sleeping. Sometimes yeah. I'll put them under my bed and ask them to heal certain chakras or help ask them to take away certain energies out of my body to absorb dense stuff or I'll ask them to heal me in my sleep, things like that. Um, different crystals are for different things. Google is going to be like your best friend. Obviously when you buy a new crystal, you can look up what it is and see what it's good for, what it can help you with. Um, and yeah, on that break, we'll go into crystals a tiny bit more when we come back from the break. Cause I feel like there's a few more tidbits to touch on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we in have the meantime, a lot to you. in the meantime, enjoy our little break and we will see you back here in a sec. 
Hello, hello. So we are talking about crystals and using them for manifesting. We already said that you should cleanse your crystal once you either inherit it or pick it up at a secondhand shop because we don't necessarily recommend going out and buying them because we don't know where they're coming from. Some crystals are meant to stay in the earth, so us taking them out all the time is not necessarily the best thing ever. Some of them aren't even real, even though they said they were. Some of them are, heat gets applied to them and then it basically kills the crystal. Um, if they have weird colors and stuff and they've been dyed, that kills the energy of the crystal. So you got to be kind of picky about your crystal selection. And the universe is going to bring you together with the right crystal. So let's just put that out there. Yeah. So the first step I said was to cleanse a crystal. Second step was to ask it if it will help you manifest whatever it is you're wanting to manifest. And then the third step is to either meditate with it as you visualize this manifestation Use it um, in a certain aspect of your home that correlates to what you're trying to manifest, which goes into feng shui, which we will touch on in this segment. Um, place it somewhere in your dream jar all the time. And every time you see it, just be like, thanks, Crystal, for helping me manifest that thing. Yeah, I know you're helping me manifest. Um, you can talk to your crystals. Like, it's like the same as plants, you know, loving them, talking to them, meditating with them, sleeping with them. If it's small enough, you can sleep with it under your pillow. Some crystals are, have, like, really active energy, so I don't always like to have them in the bedroom. It can be a little bit overstimulating when you're trying to, like, relax. Same as plants. I usually don't keep live plants in the bedroom. Um... But yeah, so you can get creative with different ways to use them. And like I said, since we don't have a whole hour to talk about crystals right now, I have blog posts about this. So go to kelseyaida.com, search in the search tab for crystals, and there's a few different articles that will lead you to which crystals are good for manifesting what and um, how to work with them. Yeah. And I forgot to mention, I have a blog post about this dream jar. So if there's anything that doesn't make sense or you need more clarification, just lindsayrobinson.com type in dream jar, you'll find it. Um, yeah. So what's the next thing? Vision, vision boards. boards. Vision boards. I love vision boards. Vision boards, dream boards. It's really close to the, to the dream jar, except it's with pictures. So there's really no wrong way to do the vision board. The only rule is that you got to feel good about everything that goes on it. <laughs> you don't want a depression board. You want a dream. Board. <laughs> so, yeah, um, true. like on mine, I just, uh, did one as part of the homework assignment for my money group. I have a money group, money hypnosis group that I'm running right now. And I told them part of their homework was to create a dream board. And I realized I hadn't done one in like a year. So I was like, it's a good time for me to update mine too. So it was really great because as I was taking off, uh, or as I was updating it, I noticed that most of those intentions or, or images that I had on the dream board or the vision board were kind of came to fruition, which was so oh, nice. So you just love that moment when you warm. realize everything you've been wanting has already manifested. <laughs> it's such a, like a fuzzy feeling inside. It's so good. It's just, it's such a good confirmation that like every small thing you're doing towards your goal is working. Um, every big thing you're doing towards your goal is working, you know, but it's nice to see those small things paying off. So as I was redoing my board, I, I had another really amazing problem too. Uh, the best problem to have is that I didn't know what to put on it because I, I couldn't think of anything that I was like, you know, need, you know, that word needing. I didn't, I didn't have that pull really for, for most of the, and I have so much. You're feeling satisfied. That's great. Exactly. But what am I supposed to do about it? Because I have to make one, right? So I'm like, well, what can I, what do I want more of? So if you're, if you're stumped and you can't think of anything that you don't have that you, that you'd like to bring uh, into your life. Just think of what you already have that you love and bring more of that. So I have, I have some lucky numerology numbers on there. Um, I have a hummingbird, which to me is a really good universal sign that everything's a okay. Um, whenever I see a hummingbird, that's what that means. I have affirmations, you know, the best is yet to come. And, uh, I have me smiling on there way more than once. I have a couple pictures of me, um, the picture from the show actually on our copy. And I also have a picture of me just like hysterically laughing because my photographer thought that that was hilarious. So I'm like, well, you can't go wrong if you're laughing. So I want more of that. And uh, yeah, I also have, you know, some really good spiritual pictures that really kind of take me to the spiritual place that I love. And I want more of that connection to my spirituality um, this time that I'm making my dream board. And it's just, yeah, stuff like that. Life is beautiful. I also... Uh, photoshopped a picture of my PayPal account 
and just like wrote and created the number that I actually wanted. Just added a lot of zeros uh-huh. to the yep. end of whatever you had in there. Exactly. As my next income goal, uh, realistic, attainable, but gives me butterflies. I think that's the the perfect middle ground bef- uh, because you, if you make it too big, like if I put a million dollars, sure, I might get there eventually, but it seems so far off that my subconscious will immediately try to fight it. Whereas if I put something that's a little bit more realistic for me, but still kind of makes me happy, giddy, nervous, then perfect. That is where you want to stay when you're making these intentions. So um, I have an eight by 11. It's just a regular printer page that I just kind of created on Canva. Um, that Shout out to Canva <laughs> that I created. Um, and so if you just want to make it simple, just you know, use an eight by 11. Uh, I have clients that still use magazine pictures. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that because they just felt more connected to doing more, a more hands-on kind of thing. Um, so yeah. yeah. And just to rewind for anyone who's like, what's a vision board? A vision board is literally just a poster where you put all your intentions, all your dreams, all your desires. It's basically like a craft project. You can get a bunch of magazines, find words that stand out to you, pictures that you love the essence of, put it all on there. And you're basically saying universe, this is what I am claiming in my life. Please send it at your earliest convenience. Thank you very much. Um, I have a whole lesson on this in my manifesting masterclass course, which I'll touch on a little bit towards the end of the show if you guys are interested. Um, But also, if you have a Pinterest account, that's a bunch of vision boards. You've got vision boards for food, for your health and fitness, for your home. So treat that as a manifestation game. Every time you pin something, you're saying, universe, I want more of this. I love this. I crave this. This is so satisfying. Yeah, um, vision boards are like the base, base way to go when it comes to manifesting, and it and because it's so easy and it's so powerful and it's so fun, it's like the best of all the different worlds. Um, so if you haven't made a vision board, make a vision board. You're gonna feel so much better. It's really so fun. Better. And if you do make one, like actually get crafty and make one, send us a picture. Please tag yeah. us on social media because that would be awesome. If you take a picture and post it on your story or whatever. Tag me at Kelsey Aida. Tag Lindsay at Lindsay Robinson because we want to see and we want to repost it. We want to celebrate with you. And for and your those, awesomeness. Yeah, we're going to hold those intentions for you as well. So we'd love to see the work you get done. Um, yeah, let's feng shui into feng shui. Cool. So feng shui <laughs> is the ancient art of arranging your space so that the chi aka energy has the best optimal flow and results for your life and fun fact did you know that the feng shui of your home aka the energy of your home or the chi of your home accounts for about 33.3 percent of your manifestation power so If you have a really busy home, you don't like being in your home, it's hard to sleep in your home, you think your home is ugly, this is kind of working against you in your manifestation Mm -hmm. efforts. And I don't know where they got the statistic from. I heard it from Marie Diamond, who's a feng shui expert, and she does feng shui for all the celebrities and stars and helps them win awards and get into movies and do all their big dreams with feng shui. Um, And basically... This is because you spend about a third of your life in your home and the energy of your home affects your vibration and vice versa. Your energy can affect the energy of your home because it's all intermixing. It's all intertwining as you spend time at home. You can also feng shui your office. You can feng shui your car. You can feng shui your vision board. You can feng shui your desk at work. And how it works is... I mean, we could do a whole course on feng shui, which I probably will do one day because I'm so obsessed with it. But the essential rules of feng shui are that clutter is the enemy. So the more stuff you have in your home, it creates a lot of energy. It creates a lot of density. Um, As you have noticed from living your life and being a human, whenever you get rid of stuff and you purge things and you donate, um, don't you feel lighter? Don't you feel better? Don't you feel clearer? Don't you have more clarity? That's because you are intuitively picking up on the chi in your home. The less stuff you have in your home, the lighter and more clear you're going to feel, which is going to help to raise your vibration, which is going to help you to manifest. So clutter is the enemy. Also, there's a lot of ways to arrange your home and to What's arrange the grid crystals. Called? There's a grid. Yeah, so there's this thing called the feng shui bagua. You can look this up on Google. 
Um, it's, let me write it out so I can spell it for you guys. <laughs> it's V-A-G-U-A, I believe. Feng Shui Bagua. And you place this bagua like a blueprint over your home or over your, you can use it for an individual room or a whole building as a Let's whole. Let's do it real quick because we know that like our workspace is probably a rectangle. Our vision boards are rectangles. The, the, Bagua is, I think, like a square or rectangle, right? So let's do it very simply and just say like which corner, which, you know, middle space and, and top left corner, whatever, is going to be what um, what area. So let, so if we're doing a vision board and we want to feng shui our vision board, um, what are the corners, the top corners represent the middle and so on and so forth. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep, I, I do. In English. Okay. So I'm going to go, so in the feng shui bagua, create a square in your mind. Then divide that square into nine equal squares. So you put two lines down and then two lines across. Exactly. A tic-tac-toe board. The first square, which is the top left hand, which in a room would be the back left corner, um, or on your vision board, it would be the top left corner. This is going to be your space that represents wealth and prosperity and abundance. So if you're manifesting money, anything that represents money or abundance to you, you want to place in this area of your home or on this part of your vision board. So things like fountains, because they have running water, it's like an overflow of abundance, a bowl of money with coins overflowing, um, crispy dollar bills, you can keep cash in this section of your house or on your vision board. There's a color too, right? Mm -hmm. The color is purple. Each, each uh, area has a color, a shape, and a number that activates that thing that you're trying to manifest. Um, I think we should link to Marie Diamond's course in the show notes because I've taken it and it helped me learn a lot. Yeah. Um, so we'll give you guys that link. We'll add it into the show notes. Money is a big one. So what's the? let's just do a couple. So money is a big one and then we'll do, I don't know. Uh, let's do health. 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 So health is the very center of your home or the very center of your vision board. The color that represents health is yellow. So placing anything that's yellow in this area of your home is going to boost your health. Um, this is a really black blood this is a really bad place for keeping storage or excess mm. stuff because you want your health to be clean you want the energy to be light if you kept a box of garbage in the middle of your house that's going to correlate to your health and vice versa so feng shui is interesting because let's say your health is deteriorating and in the middle of your home you have a dead tree so it could be that your health start started disintegrating and then the tree started to die or it could be that the tree was dying and that affect your health, that affected your health. And I know it sounds silly, but it's really not because how one thing happens is how everything happens. And because we live in this holographic world, everything is a metaphor. So yeah. your home is reflective of your state of being, of your life. Like, think about it like this. When you're depressed, doesn't your house get really messy? You just let everything go to shit. You don't care anymore. The dishes pile up. So that's a reflection of your lower vibration. Yeah. As soon as you start feeling better, or if you want to feel better, haven't you noticed that intuitively you're like, oh my gosh, I need to I clean. clean. <laughs> I'm going to clean my sheets. I'm going to clean my closet. I'm yeah. going to clean my room. And then you start feeling better. Why? Because it works in both directions. So that's why feng shui is such a powerful tool. And going back to the bagua, when you look this up, you can put your certain crystals for manifesting certain things in these certain areas. You can put affirmations in each area of your home to activate the vibration of what you're wanting to manifest. Yep. So I'm definitely going to link to Marie Diamond's course because she teaches you how to put these affirmations in the right sections, what colors to use, uh, like what types of things represent what, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's super, super helpful. That's kind of how I got introduced to feng shui. And it's been so awesome like people come to my house and they're like why does it feel so good in here i'm like dude yeah. it's feng shui the shit out like <laughs> everything in my house is in a certain place for a certain purpose and i love feng shui because it's so intentional and as yeah. manifestors we like to create our life with intention we like to live intentionally yeah. so my home is a reflection of that like i have things in my helpful people and travel section that will cultivate more of that in my life. For example, I keep my empty suitcases there to signal to the universe, I am ready to go at any moment. If you want me to travel somewhere, I'm on it. And which corner you know, is that just for people? This is in the 
So the front right corner of your home. So if you walk in the front door, you make a right that corner of your home. That's the travel and helpful people section. There's also a section for relationships, which I'm sure people are very interested in. That is the back right hand corner. So let's say in your master bedroom, you walk in the back right hand corner. You probably have a bedside table or something there. That's your relationship corner. That's where you can put photos of you and your beloved. That's where you can keep your laundry if you want to spice up your love life. You can put a red candle there to make things spicy. Um, Yeah, there's so many different ways to have fun with feng shui and to get really creative with it. If you're like, I don't need to take a whole course on feng shui, but I want to learn the basics, it's in my manifesting masterclass. There's a whole lesson, and I tell you like how to arrange your furniture, what colors are for what. Um, how to activate different things with affirmations and it is so fun and it makes your house super pretty (laughs) that's so cute yeah your 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 space is definitely very open and clean and um look we know that there are only certain things that you're able to do because kelsey lives on her own let's just be real she lives on her own she can decorate however i can do whatever the fuck i want because there's (laughs) nobody else here telling me what to do (laughs) But to the, that's why we say, like, if you do have a full house or, or if you can't redecorate exactly the way you want, um, do your desk, do your vision board, do your bedroom. You know, there's always something you can do to amplify your manifesting power. And and uh, I wish I could have a living room full of crystals and things, but those are weapons in my house, so I have to keep <laughs> them in a safe place. Yeah, she has three little boys, so sharp crystals everywhere is probably not <laughs> ideal. Oh, not <laughs> if I like my TV and their heads. Um, but we have one minute before we go to break. So I want to leave you guys with this thought in feng shui. Your intuition knows what feels best. So it's about setting up your house the way it feels best for you. Think of when you go into a restaurant, you know how you always want to sit in the table that's furthest from the door and has a booth with a high back. That's because intuitively your body feels the safest and most in control of your space when you sit there. So that's why in feng shui, it's about, Um, embracing your inner king or your inner queen, going back to those times and thinking, okay, if I was the queen of my space, how would it be set up? In an office, you would have your desk far away from the door so people have to walk to you. You have to face the door so you can see who's coming in and out, what kind of opportunities are coming in and out, and you're in charge of your space. You might want to have a chair that has a high back because that makes sure your back is protected. Everything in feng shui is literal and metaphorical, so it's really fun. Well, and it's the same thing with like your instinctual need to sleep facing your door. If you imagine if your bed yeah. was if your door was behind the That's head of your terrible bed. Terrible feng shui. It's terrifying. Yeah, you I wouldn't be able to sleep like that. But anyway, yeah, these are listen to your intuition. You you know what feels better. And that's why we're giving you so many choices. We have one more thing we're going to go over as soon as we come back from break. This one is so fun. It's super witchy. So come back and we'll <laughs> cover it um, when we get back from break. See you in a minute. Welcome back. Well, we um, have talked about some really, really great manifestation companions today. Um, There's one more that we really wanted to make time for. Um, It's also really, really fun. And it's, I don't know if it's the best one, but it's the, it's the most fun one. So that's full moon rituals, new moon rituals, um, moon rituals. Let's talk about that. Like, I don't know a ton about it. Kelsey, I don't know how much you know about it. We do have friends and colleagues that are experts on this. So we're going to talk about having someone on because this is pretty in depth, but there are little things that you can start doing that just feel really good. Um, and I think you would be the best person, Kels, to talk about maybe why the moon is such an important companion in general to manifesting. Yeah. So because our human bodies are like 80 or 90% water, whatever it is, and the moon really affects, the moon's energy affects water, um, this is why people go crazy on the new on the full moon. There's more like ER visits. There's more craziness in the air because whatever is going on with you internally is going to be amplified during the full moon. Just as the moon controls the tides, it also fucks with our emotions and our energy, and it can either help or hinder our ability to manifest depending on where we're at. So. My biggest tips for this are when a full moon is coming up, do everything you can to feel empowered so that when you're in that full moon state, it's extra elevated, extra heightened, and you whatever you have going on inside of you is going to be amplified. So if you can, stay away from feeling shitty because you're going to feel even shittier when the full moon happens if you're already going into it feeling bad. 
um, do the best you can to raise your vibe before the full moon comes and then take advantage of that super awesome feeling when it's there. Do you um, always know when the full moon happens? Are you pretty? Uh, yeah, I have an app on my phone. <laughs> So, so I have an I just, app on my phone, so I always know what phase the moon is in. So do you remember when we had Nina on the show and you're like, I don't know when I have a period. I just know because I've, I'm like days later when I realize that my mood is all messed up, I'm like, oh yeah, it's probably my period. Yeah. You don't even know when your period happens, but if the moon is full, <laughs> she's all about it. She's like, yep, I know exactly what Well, I'm this is TMI, but I actually figured out that my period is synced up with the new moon. So whenever the new moon happens, that's when my period starts. Interesting. And a lot of women are actually like that. So it would, it's interesting for women to like chart their period, their menstrual cycle, and then correlate it to what's happening with the moon because every month it's pretty like spot on. And then there's articles online like if your period does start on the new moon, then you're this type of person and more likely to ha- be in this phase of your life. And like it I has all these know that. behind it. Yeah, That's isn't that cool. interesting? Yeah, I have a I have a full moon app on my phone too, and it says here that it's perfect timing for our show because there's a full moon on the fifteenth of August. Yep, of August. That's the month we're in. <laughs> and so, with what we kind of go over today, if you guys want to start implementing some of this stuff, it's super fun. So, uh, what do you do on the full moon? Let's just do full moon first. Okay, so we'll start with full moon. So, the full moon is a time to harvest what you manifested in the new moon. The new moon is more for intent setting so new moon is more when you do your manifestation work the full moon is more about harvest and making big decisions and for me I always use the full moon as a time of release so whatever it is that I'm sick and tired of experiencing that I'm ready to let go of that isn't serving me anymore I do an intentional like ritual or ceremony to kind of release it and something really fun that I do so (laughs) my dad used to be like a magician like for parties and stuff like when he was a young adult And he was called Magic by Mike because his name is Michael. And so my dad knows all these magic tricks. And he told me. I love that that your dad is a magician. I didn't know that. It's great. So my dad is like a pretend magician, but secretly he's like actually a wizard because he's super into manifesting, even though he would never admit it. And now his daughter is a manifesting witch. So here we are coming full circle. (laughs) It runs in the family. Also, my mom is pretty mystical. She has Mayan blood. And so it all goes back into the bloodline. But anyway. So my dad told me this really cool trick that you guys can't tell anyone else unless you're listening on the show because I just wanted to be like a special thing. But if you have (laughs) Lipton tea bags, like just regular black tea from Lipton, you take out the tea and you undo the paper of the bag. If you burn this paper, it floats away and disintegrates. Oh, yeah. And it's really cool. And so what I like to do on the full moon is I'll write down anything I want to let go of, whether that's stress, worry, a certain personal problem, caring what other people think, whatever it is. I'll write it all down on a Lipton tea bag, and then I'll burn it and just watch it float away and disintegrate into nothing. <laughs> so when you see like magicians and stuff, because I've, I've done uh, like New Year rituals um, and things like that where we'll ha- they'll have that kind of paper. So I didn't know that that's a hack. You can just use a tea bag. I don't know mm-hmm. where you could get this. But paper. only Lipton tea. Why like only it's Lipton? from that brand. I don't know. The bags have some chemicals or something that makes it just burn oh, and lovely. float away. <laughs> yeah. So that's what <laughs> you're putting in your body, everyone. <laughs> Super flammable kind of chemicals that are going to make the paper fly away. You're drinking it into your body. That's yeah. interesting. Though. That's really cool. So um, you you use the the – do you actually use the tea bags? Yeah, I bought like a pack of 100 every time there's a full moon. Sometimes I have friends over. We'll write down everything we want to get rid of. We'll go outside and just release it to the moon. And And then they'll look at you like, how did you do that to the paper? Yeah, and I just know my little secret from my It's hilarious. I know, it's awesome. Which is exactly, you know, actually what I was going to say, I'm not super versed in in moon rituals. And the only thing I've ever done that actually feels really good to me is, is, um, you know, write my intentions out like that. And mm-hmm. whatever you're letting go of, whatever you want to bring more into, uh, into your life. I did this with my husband on the new year and, um, God bless him. He's just like going with whatever I want to do. But, um, he's, you know, he's pretty into it too. Cause he agree. He's all about intention. He's like, whatever you're intending, whatever you, he's really big on this intention piece, which is the name of the game. So, um, 
yeah, it was, it was really fun. You just kind of write down your intentions and what you're releasing and you light it on fire and just watch the magic yes. happen. I feel like it depends on your personality because for me, I really like to light on fire the things I'm getting rid of, but the things I'm manifesting, sometimes I like to keep them in a jar or keep them yeah. in a box or have them tight to like be like, oh, this is what's happening mm-hmm. for me. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I don't want to burn my dreams. I don't no, want to watch exactly. my dreams go up into flames. But for some people, they do because they're like releasing it to the universe. They're not worrying about it anymore. Yeah. So do what feels good to you. I definitely agree with you um, about the lighting on fire, what you want to release, because if you're intending to release it and you light it on fire, there's something that happens within you that's just like it feels more clear and it feels lighter and it feels it feels like you have begun to release it already because you have. It's all about intention. Um, So that's is there anything else you do in the moon ritual? That's well, pretty much all I do. <laughs> so what I do in the full moon is I'll sit and meditate and I'll let everything come to me that I want to release. I'll write it down. I'll burn it. I'll watch it float away. And I will charge all my crystals in the new moon. So you can put them out into the moonlight. Let them get some moon. Let them get some sun. Keep them outside for 24 hours, whatever. Um, this is a good way to recharge your crystals. Almost all crystals love that. Um, and then for the new moon, it's about setting the intention. So this is more a time of manifestation. This is when you would want to make your vision board, create your dream jar, work with your crystals. The new moon is about planting those seeds. So you could even plant a plant and make it like you're manifesting abundant plant and maybe it's like a succulent that flows outside of the pot and you plant it and you ask the plant to be your abundance plant and then you put it in the abundance corner of your house. I'm not great with plants. I'm great with kids. I'm not great with plants. Um, oh, man. But I do have – it's funny because I do have an aloe plant in my office uh, that's thriving, and I thought my dog killed it. Like, he ate it <laughs> all the way down to, like, the nub. And I was like, it's dead. It's dead. I'm going to throw it away. And my friend was like, no, no, no. Just put it in water and watch it reroot. I'm like, it's not going to. It's terrible. <laughs> um, I was very mad at my dog. But, uh, yeah, it worked out. And so I replanted it, and it's beautiful. It's not only, like, growing – better than it ever did. It's greener. It's, and I, I can feel like it's so thankful that I saved its life. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> it loves you. Way. I know it loves me so much and I love it. It's amazing. It's such a survivor, but the new moon is actually on August 30th if my app is correct. So if you guys want to, um, do all that, do whatever, you know, intention that you want to do, make your vision board on the new moon, do any of these like manifesting, uh, amplifiers, I guess, that you want to do. Intention setting work is perfect for the new moon. On the new moon, August 30th. Um, We have a few minutes left. I want Kelsey to tell you guys about her manifestation course. Um, I'm in it, so you have to do it because you'll see both of us in it. Go ahead, Kelsey. Tell Yeah, so Lindsay's like a featured guest in some of the bonuses. So a while back, I created this course called Manifesting Masterclass. And if you are a beginner to intermediate manifester, this is the perfect course for you because I walk you through everything you need to know in order to start manifesting your dreams. It's like a formula. So whatever it is you're trying to manifest, it will help you to create that. I wouldn't say it's for like seasoned manifestors because you're going to go through it and be like, oh, a lot of this is review. But if you're new to manifestation, dude, I have helped my students manifest $100,000 scholarships, new cars, tickets to Lady Gaga concerts, super fulfilling relationships, their dream jobs. Like, you list it. I've helped one of my students mm-hmm. manifest it using this course. So basically, there's a couple different modules. In the first one, I teach you how powerful you are. We do a couple energy experiments. I show you some common misconceptions to avoid, things like that. In the second module, I help you to raise your vibration, reprogram your mind for success, um, and give you some actionable exercises for feeling good. And then the third module is where it gets fun and you start doing all these manifesting things like vision boarding like using your crystals, like, um, there's like so many things in here and I can't even remember what all of them are, but hypnosis by me. Don't yeah. There's the hypnosis hypnosis by me. So when you enroll in this program, there's almost $8,000 worth of bonuses. A couple hundred of those bonuses are just from Miss Lindsay Robinson and they are all her hypnosis audios. If you go to my you shop, you'll see your computer or phone. Yeah. If you go to my, if you've ever been to my shop, um, on my website, you'll see that I have like all these different topics that you can get and download these, uh, Hyp- hypnosis audios for to, to focus specifically on that topic. And I just gave them all to Kelsey for her course. So, um, instead of going through the shop and spending a whole bunch of money on them, you can get them as part of a bonus and also get this amazing course too. So it's really great. 
Um, anything else? Yeah. Um, the course has six modules. I only went through three of them, but basically it's like a 30 day program. You take it at your own pace. When you enroll, you get all the content. Um, and all the bonuses and the cool thing is there is a seven day like grace period where if you're like Oh, this isn't really for me. I kind of already learned some of this stuff You can keep all the bonuses and there's over seven thousand dollars worth of bonuses They're all downloadable. You could literally steal from me. You could en <laughs> you could enroll in the course Download all the bonuses ask for a refund within seven days and you would have gotten all those benefits those bonuses, obviously, I don't want you to do that because that's a very evil thing to do. But I'm just saying worst case scenario, like you can't lose out here. You're not losing. Yeah, you're not it's losing a, out. It's a great course. I've definitely gone through it. It's awesome. She's so cute. And she's so, um, I mean, you are, but that's neither here nor there. But she's very uh, knowledgeable. Like She knows what's what she's talking about. Obviously, if you guys are listening to the show, you know that she knows what she's talking about. So go, um, go check out the course. If you liked any of these companions that we've talked about today, if there's one that you liked a little bit better than the others, let us know. We really want to open, have an open communication with you guys. So if there's something you liked or, or you have a different spin on something we talked about, or if you know more about a topic that we didn't really know that much about, let us know. And we're excited to hear what you liked about this episode. And, uh, if you have time, leave us a review. Yeah, and if you want to learn more about Manifesting Masterclass, just go to thebestmanifestingcourse.com. That's the URL. But I want to give you guys a little tip. If you download my free manifesting cheat sheet, which you all should because it's a free PDF that you can download, you will get a little surprise incentive to maybe join Manifesting Masterclass. So go do that. And until next time, we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>